Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison, where we talk about sports and life. I got my main man, Mr. Ashley Montgomery, oh my founder and owner of Midtown Through Athletics. What's going on, sir? Not a whole bunch. Not a whole bunch. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Now, I definitely appreciate you taking time out your day, man. I, I, I appreciate you even coming on because you know, your program, everything that you have going on, man, I think is, is super important. You know, when me and you first connected through LinkedIn, I believe it was. Yeah. And I, I seen what you had going on and then we, we, we connected. Uh, we tapped in. You told me about everything that you had going on. I kind of told you about what everything I had going on. Yeah. And there was a lot of similarities. So, yeah. um, I, man, I, 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 like I said, I definitely think it's important. And I think more people need to know about what you have going on. Yeah. So Mentor Through Athletics, how did it even start and why did you start that? It's crazy. Um, so it started when I was about probably 10 or 11 years old. Um, and I'll tell wow. you wow, how that, how that came about. Um, you know, growing up, pretty much my mom was a single mom. Um, my dad had challenges with um, drug and alcohol um, addiction. And so um, I was an athlete, right? I love playing ball. Um, football was my, my sport of choice. Right. And, um, you know, we had moved out to Bowie um, when it was pretty much rural, honestly, um, really, really um, not developed, nothing like it is now. Um, and I kept pressing my mama, I want to play football, I want to play football. And um, she was trying to figure it out. She was a government worker. So she caught the train and, you know, she didn't really get home uh, before 630. So it was hard. So she was like, well, I don't know. I'll see. So one day she actually gets home from work early and she says, uh, all right, let me take you up to this field. So she takes me up to the field. And I get introduced to the coach and the coach, um, you know, she tells the coach, listen, you know, I, I'm, I'm a single mom. I, um, I work for the government, you know, I'll get him to practice when I can, but if I can't, you know, I, I won't be able to. And so he looks my mom in the eyes and he says, look, mom, um, if you sign him up, he was like, I'll do my part. He's like, I'll pick him up for practice, even for games if I have to. Um, and that was a seed. That was a seed that was planted um, because this man was consistent. You know, right. I always tell people the for me, one of the most powerful parts of this was the fact that this man didn't look anything like me. He was an older white gentleman, um, wow. beat up old Dotson. Um, and he poured into this young black kid uh, who was just wanting to play ball. And, right. uh, you know, for the next two or three years, he was consistent, man. Picked me up every day for practice um, without fail. And um, I was just extremely appreciative. And so... When I got of age and I started coaching and I found myself picking kids up, it was the seed that Sonny Kimball had planted in me. And so then at some point that evolved into mentoring through athletics in 2013. And uh, we've been rocking and rolling ever since. And so that's how it started. Um, that's the why behind how I started. And so right. uh, we just doing what we've been doing. Absolutely, man. I, and I think it's key. I know, man, you talked off uh screen before man in regards to the importance of it and how athletic is athletics is a, is a, it's a teaching tool in a sense it's, it's yeah. you can learn life skills through athletics you know by you you know you know being a former player and then me playing basketball there's a lot of things that i use utilize a lot of tools i utilize today that i learned through the fundamentals yeah. of basketball yeah. teamwork not giving up getting through adversity um it's not over until it's over all those all those yeah. different things and i think that you know, if if coaches coach like that and also had a conversation, like, for example, my high school coach, Morgan Wooten, you know, he was big on – he he's a great coach, but he was a great teacher too. Yeah. So we talked about basketball, the fundamentals of it, but he also talked about the fundamentals of life, yeah. how to carry yourself, character, all these different things. So it was, it was like a mix of both. Yes. And that's tr that's truly what athletics is about. If, if, if the – because the kids can learn so much that can help them later, later on in life and off the court and off the field as well. Yeah. And so, you know, oftentimes people, you know, they say, you know, they kind of, because we, we present ourselves um, in, in the image wise, as far as a sports program, but we, I tell people all the time, now we just, we are a mentoring program, mass as a sports program. Um, you know, if, if I say to kids, Hey, you know, let's get together next week for an hour and do some mentoring. I'm not going to get anybody to respond. Right, but if I say, right. hey, let's get together. Let's play some flag football or some basketball or some soccer, right? Or let's do some cheerleading, right? Then right. they all gain, but they have no right. idea. They walk in the room and they're going to be met by an individual uh, who's going to understand how important it is for them to be disciplined, how important right. it is for them to be accountable, responsible. Right. 
enduring, right. right? And so those are the four pillars that our program are built on because as you said, it doesn't matter the sport, you have to have discipline, right? You have to be accountable to your teammates. You have to be responsible, right? You got to accept what's going on in, in terms of what's in your space. And then you got to endure because there's always going to be adversity in any type of competitive environment. And the only way that you're going to make it as a group is if you endure. So DARE sure. is the pillar that we build our program on. So you're 100% correct. That is how we establish character in our program. Right. So how many how many kids do you normally deal with on a, on a daily basis? Like, how, do, how does your program operate, I should say? So, so right now, we're in the spring, heading into the summer. Uh, we're running four programs right now. Um, and we have approximately about 285 kids in our program right now um, wow. between the flag football, soccer, cheerleading, um, and then basketball. Basketball just ended, um, and we, we're looking to start back up. But, but yeah, so between those four programs, um, you know, those, that's what our numbers look like. And, you know, again, like I said, that's how they get connected to what we do. Um, but it's the amazing coaches that we have right. that pour into these young people um, beyond right. – uh, the athletic field, right? And and, and right. when they have these sidebar conversations um, with our young people um, about, hey, well, well, what's going on? Like, well, you know, you're not right. yourself today. Reminded of an incident we had um, in the fall where you know one of our one of our soccer players just wasn't having a practice like she would normally have, and right. um, it, it it was just she was just different, right? And the coach uh, pretty much kind of paused practice, handed it over to another coach. Um, and pulled her off to the side, probably had like a 15, 20 minute conversation in the midst of practice. Come to find out this young lady been, been being bullied and wow. um, being bullied. And it just was, it was, it was really weighing on her. Now you're talking about a nine year old, right? Um, and so at this point she, she, she's struggling. Well, because that coach took that time and had that conversation, she was able to get the parents involved, able to get the school involved and they was able to stop this right in the midst right and this was this young lady she had both her parents are involved like they're connected but she right. didn't quite feel comfortable sharing this with her parent but guess what she shared it with her coach right and because right. her coach was in position her coach could then play a part and um help shut some things down uh, that was going on around her. so it was just again i got i got tons of stories like that um but just know that as you just talked about, it's so much bigger than the sport, right? Because right. It, it's everything that kind of goes into it. Um, we're building a young person up. Right, and, and and that's exactly what you're saying in regards to building a young person up. And I think a lot of times, or maybe they, I'm pretty sure they do know, a lot of coaches don't know the power that they have. Because yeah. you got to understand, like you said, a lot of times you're dealing with a single parent mom. Yeah. Sometimes the two parents are involved, but you know, like for example, my mom, yeah, she had two, it's three boys. All together, you know, but but she right. have no athletic type of skill. Like she never, she right. wasn't really involved in the game like that. So when you hand your kids off to the coach, the coach end up having that influence because they were the kid mm -hmm. majority of the time. But like yeah. you said, parents are working pretty much throughout the day. Then now they with these coaches, and now these coaches are inf influential mm -hmm. individual. And that's why I kind of got more passionate into the game because I saw how the coaches was abusing that power that they mm -hmm. had, and yeah. and. And I think it's I think it's important um, that the coaches know, and because like you said, man, it's all to depend on how these coaches are dealing with these kids, or these yes. how they dealing with the kids, how they coaching them, and how the seven statement, how they develop throughout time because of maybe stuff they went through through their coaches. And like you said, I remember coaches that was great to me, and, and the life lessons that they taught me, that's still remember to this day. Yeah, to this day when I was, right. when I was a kid. So like you said, the importance of that. Um, is is key, and like you said, a lot of times these kids don't want to talk to their parents. They rather talk to somebody else. No, and and that's true. And so, like, that's one of the things that you know, probably about I'm gonna say probably like three and a half years ago, um, we had to adjust, like, really adjust our focus. Where it was like, you know what, um, we're going to spend the energy, um, on the mentoring side of this thing because we saw that yes, the kids were coming, amazing athletes, progressing on the field, doing really well but it was that extra piece, right? Um, they were still struggling in the classroom. Uh, they were still struggling uh, when it came to being socially connected with their, with their peers and, and having to be able to, um, you know, deal with conflict and, and, and know how to address issues functionally, right? right. Not, not dysfunctionally. 
um, where you know you now get into an argument, so you just decide to avoid the person who was right. quote unquote your friend at one point. Um, right. So it was like, no, nah, we gotta we gotta now spend some energies on, on the mentoring side, and so we we literally we had a shift. Um, we changed our mission statement. We did everything um, because we had to now make the focus on we have to make a positive impact in the lives of any and everybody that we connect with, whether that's Absolutely. student, teacher, athlete, parent, whomever. And that when we did that, it literally adjusted who we were, who we were as an organization, because now everybody that worked with us understood is about positive impact. Absolutely. And if it's not making a positive impact, we got to switch it up. So Absolutely. not that we're always perfect. We have to address right. coaches and, and parents all the time. But the difference right. is when we address them. They already know the spirit in which we're coming from because it's, it's for us, it's about how we influence the minds of these young people that are watching us constantly. And so that's what kind of brings Absolutely. us to where we are as an organization. When we made this shift, we said, well, you know what? We have to be able to um, pay mentors. Because, right. you know, for the most part, our, our organization is a 100% volunteer organization. The people that do get paid are the mentors, though. And the reason being is because these are people that's not just coaching the sport, but they're also getting these young people outside um, mm -hmm. of practice. They're going to the schools. They're spending time in their neighborhoods. Um, and right. so we said we have to be able to pay these people, which kind of brings right. us to who we are now as an organization where we are a nonprofit. So we're constantly raising funds. But right now, our focus, because of the 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 need that is present in front of us, we 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 have to be able to put more mentors and tutors on the streets um, to support the people. That's just the kids in our program, right? Right. We know that as we grow, that need is going to grow even more and more. So absolutely, um, it's it's just you know again, man. As you said, coaches are so much more. Oh, they they have to do so much more than just teach a sport, right? Right. right. You got to teach life lessons. You got to teach character development. Absolutely, man. What I think you, what I think you're doing, man, is amazing, man. And I, I'm, I can guarantee you that it's changing the lives of, of a lot of these young men and women that's needed. And um, I'm, I bet they're gonna remember this forever. Like, I, because like I said, I remember things when I, that was taught to me when I was a kid, man, through sports. So I know that this is life changing, man. And you yeah. know, a lot of times when you're in it, you can't really see the magnitude of it, but yeah. man, from the outside looking in, it's amazing. So how can folks find out more about your program and any upcoming events that you have coming up? So yeah, I mean, just like everybody else, we're on social media. Um, if, if you are Facebook, just type in mentoring through Instagram, Twitter, it's uh, at MTA underscore D-A-R-E. Um, that's how you find us. There. And our website is mentoringthroughathletics.org. Um, right now, what we're working on, uh, we have a couple fundraisers going on, but the, but our main one is our sneaker ball. Travis, I'm hoping you come through, man. We're having a okay. sneaker ball. You know, you're dressing to impress up top. You got your fly sneakers on your bottom. Um, oh, we're man. Good time, man. We're going to have a comedian, um, DJ, food, um, oh, nice man. little event, man. It's going to be a great time. Um, but as I said, the, the point of this particular event uh, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm excited that we're going to have a good time, but the goal is to raise money for our mentors um, and our tutors, um, because at the end of the day, um, we have to make sure that those who are taking care of those in our community get taken care of as well. Um, and so everything that we're doing in terms of that, um, all the funds we raise are going to support um, the mentors who are already serving in our community um, and taking care of these young people um, who need us. You know, right now, I'm just thinking about where I am right now at one of our program sites. We have about 23 girls um, right now in our cheer program that we just started about three and a half weeks ago. Okay. Um, and so with us starting this program three and a half weeks ago, we've already grown um, to 20, over 20 girls. And wow. what we're doing here is we're not just teaching cheer. We're mentoring, we're tutoring, and then we're also feeding these young women. Um, at the end of practices, right? Wow. All this stuff comes, right? Absolutely. But because of the community that we're in, a lot of these young people are going home and they're not eating, right? Right, right. absolutely, That's, absolutely. You know, they're not eating. Like, they're, right. like, they're not eating. And so right. for us, um, and I'll tell you how this happened. We were just kind of having a conversation. Uh, we, we were wrapping up practice and just, just hitting, you know, getting all the kids together and just kind of overheard, one of the kids, you know, saying, well, yeah, I guess I got to go home and eat a bowl of cereal, right? Wow. And that's fine when it's an option, right? right? 
but it's something wrong with that when it's not right, right so, absolutely. um you know I, I i i decided that hey here's what i want to be able to do i want to be able to make sure that we send these girls home with dinner um and at some point i want them to be able to go home with a meal for their family but right okay. now um, we're only in position to feed these young ladies um, as they leave practice. And so um, we partnered with, with one of our partner organizations um, who have who signed on. When I called, I said, hey, listen, I need meals to be able to feed our girls after they get out of cheer practice. And it, it was it was no hesitation. Absolutely, we'll be there. And um, took us about a week or so to get it turned around. We did, and now we're feeding. And wow. so again, like I said, it, for us, it's not about the sport. Right. right, sport is amazing. Right, we. I mean, right, right. I, I love football. I, I know you like you love basketball. Absolutely. I love soccer. Right, I love these things. Um, but it's about us being able to connect with these young people, and then Absolutely. figure out how else we can go above and beyond in serving them and their families. Um, so that's kind of where we are. But like I said, the sneaker ball, June eleventh. Um, we're gonna have a great time. Go to the website. Go to our uh, social media pages and uh, get your tickets. Like I said, we're, we're going to have a really good time and uh, it's, it's, it's a good time for a cause. So that's what we do. Hey man, hey man, that's excellent, man. You know, you know, you count on, count on me for anything, however we can oh, help man. and support, however we can, man. I definitely, man, definitely keep going. I love what you're doing. Like I said, man, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm guaranteed you're changing so many lives, so many families' lives, man. And more stuff like this is needed and definitely, you know, uh, more mentors like yourself and other individuals that's working with you is needed as well. So I definitely appreciate you joining the crossover talk show with uh, with me, Travis Garrison, man. So I, I appreciate your time, brother, man. And we definitely going to catch up. And like I said, man, we, we, we're here for you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I look forward to, um, again, collaborating, doing more stuff with, with you and the organization as well. Um, because when you and I sat down, um, we both kind of looked at each other and was like, oh, yeah, we're going to be able to work together. Because Absolutely. we had a kindred spirit, right? It was like yes, we both were like, you know, um, what, what we need to do. And, you know, I tell people all the time, I can sit down with some people and their conversations about, well, who going to name going to be on top? I don't work right. with them people. I don't right, work right, with right. If you're concerned about who name going to be on top, I don't, cause I don't need my name on it at all. Right. 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 But if that's your concern, I already know where your heart is. Right. Yes, and sir. so we ain't have not one conversation like that. Our yes, conversation sir. was, all right, well, how many book bags you need? You know, we, we need help getting food. Like that was the tenor of our conversation. And so sure. that's how I knew, oh man, this brother got a heart for the community. I can work with him. And so that's where we now have to um, turn as a community, understanding that if we're really gonna make an impact, we gotta lose the egos and and and, and serve, man. Sure. We gotta serve. Sure. And so yeah. that's why, man, I appreciate what you're doing with Think First um, because that's what it's about. Yes, sir, man. We we definitely gonna we got a lot we got a lot more to do together, man. It's only, it's only just start. It's only just start, Absolutely. brother. 